India's history is punctuated by spasms of religious violence. The trigger for recent incidents has been over the consumption of beef, an age-old controversy that traces itself to the sanctity of cows in Hinduism. From New Delhi, Fred de Sam Lazaro reports. Last October, in a village not far from India's capital, Delhi, a 56-year-old Muslim man was beaten to death and his son gravely injured by an allegedly Hindu mob. His alleged crime? A rumor that he'd slaughtered a cow, an animal considered sacred to Hindus. Mohammed Akhlaq's home was ransacked, including the contents of the refrigerator, before the police arrived. A person yeah. has been killed because there were allegations that the... It was perhaps the most egregious in a spate of recent such incidents. They have alarmed many liberals and especially leaders of the significant Muslim minority who fear a rising intolerance in this largely Hindu nation. The psyche that spawns an incident like this is against India's secularism and brotherhood. It is thinking that looks down upon Muslims with distrust. This incident was not triggered by the beef issue. They murdered him on religious grounds. It turns out the meat found in Aklak's refrigerator was mutton, not beef. But the beef issue has been a political hot potato, one that's endured even as the country has entered the globalized economy. You won't find beef in a Burger King anywhere in India, for example, or a McDonald's. Here, burgers come from sheep, chickens, even vegetables, but not cows. Paradoxically, the animals roam freely on the street, vulnerable to poisonous garbage and to being captured and taken to slaughter at night, though there are efforts now to crack down on this illegal practice and to herd cows into shelters. We don't even believe that the cow is an animal. We see it as a manifestation of God. Our magazine tries to educate people about the mother cow, about the benefits of the cow. Hindus, 80% of India's 1.2 billion people, have long venerated the cow. It is the favorite animal of the deity Lord Krishna, and that reverence is likely in turn linked to the animal's utility. Devinder Nayak edits a magazine dedicated to improving awareness of the cow's significance. A poor family can sustain themselves with just one family of cows. They can sell the milk, use the dung and the urine, which has many medicinal properties. Whether that reverend should mean an outright ban on beef has been a vexing issue ever since independence in 1947 from the beef-loving British rulers. The father of modern India, a Hindu, professed his love for the cow, but Mahatma Gandhi said he would not impose his views on Muslims, Christians, as well as Hindus in some regions who do consume beef. Nonetheless, India's constitution, while not outlawing cow slaughter, urges individual states to do so. India is a federal country, and so many states have in fact gone ahead and uh, outright banned cow slaughter. Shashi Tharoor is an author and member of the opposition Congress, the once powerful party of Gandhi and Nehru. For years under Congress rule, there was an accommodation of beef consumption in minority and many urban communities. But that changed with the election in 2014 of a Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party, or BJP, led by charismatic Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The BJP has essentially encouraged a more proactive and aggressive form of Hindu chauvinism. That's the sort of polarization that could be deeply damaging to India's stability and India's future. In a recent speech in Parliament, Tharoor said the frequent reports of vigilante groups targeting minority communities of rising intolerance is coming at the cost of India's reputation. A Bangladeshi friend of mine was visiting Delhi that week and he told me that Islamic fundamentalists in his country were having a field day attacking India as a place where it's safer to be a cow than a Muslim. Is that a bit of hyperbole? It is a bit of hyperbole. I think that it's high time that the government realized that they're making asses of themselves and discrediting an enormously plural and diverse civilization. For his part, Prime Minister Modi, though allied with Hindu nationalist groups, has not involved himself in their key demand that India declare itself a Hindu nation. Modi has stuck to the pro-business economic development theme he struck ever since ascending to office. Our country can only prosper if Hindus and Muslims unite to fight against poverty and we defeat poverty. 
Coming several days after the murder of Mohammed Akhlaq, Modi was criticized for saying too little too late and for not reining in vigilante groups and some members of his party who'd made statements appearing to support them. But Modi's supporters say it's the opposition that's using divisive religion politics for their own gain. The Prime Minister has repeatedly said that if the country should remain united, everyone will have to walk hand in hand for development. But there are certain politicians that promote pseudo-secularism and are not ready to hear his message. The key question is whether the so-called beef issue represents the normal ebb and flow of a vibrant, if sometimes violent, democracy, or whether in fact that democracy faces a new, real threat. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Fred DeSam Lazaro in New Delhi. Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas, Minnesota. A version of this story aired on the PBS program Religion and Ethics News Weekly.